another expert interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, and today I am joined by Tom Potowski, who is Dr. Tom Potowski, Chair of the Economics Department at Portland State University. Welcome, Tom. Hi, John. Nice to see you. Great. And what we're going to talk about today is the economic outlook for 2018. And why is that important for sales? Well, obviously, if the economy is doing better, we have job growth, hiring, wage growth, then capital investment, um, banks start to lend to small businesses, medium business, large businesses. And we, and obviously, it becomes a much more robust sales environment if all of those things happen, which unfortunately rarely all happen at the one time. But um, so, Tom, what what are the prevailing winds for 2018? Well, John, you know, things are looking fairly good. Uh, you know, we, we've had some very strong uh, job growth so far. Just actually last month, the U.S. job growth was quite excellent. Uh, and, and the unemployment rate is low. So we're kind of reaching this part of the business cycle where we're getting to full employment. And the final sort of stages here of full employment is that, uh, you know, we may not see the unemployment rate go down much further, right, but right. what we're going to start seeing probably is wages starting to increase. You know, as labor markets become a little tighter, uh, businesses actually start to compete for the available labor. And we're actually starting to see those wages start to increase. So that means better incomes. That means better in a sense, sales for businesses. Yeah, and so so you get the so the war for talent obviously heats up, and I mean that's a good thing for individual employees, and you know for and companies have to compete for them. What about what are you seeing in terms of capital investment and capital spending? Because uh, obviously that's a big thing for for people who are selling capital goods. Yes. So, so once again, once you start to get to this point in the business cycle, if businesses are going to continue to be able to gain market share, uh, they're coming up to capacity constraints. So they need, in some aspects, right to expand. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think investments are looking fairly good uh, in the commercial real estate. It's actually getting a little softer, interestingly enough. Uh, but otherwise, for other businesses, expansion and so on. Um, and it, it should continue into 2018. How much, uh, you, you mentioned commercial real estate. How much of that do you think is related to perhaps the the evolution of, you know, mobile, you know, telecommuting, people working from home, people, you know, companies becoming less dependent on offices so that, you know, where you may have economic growth, it may not be reflected in, in more people in offices. Well, what we're seeing is uh, the office building and so on, industrial building, uh, did fairly well uh, last couple of years. Uh, but I think what's happening, you're getting to some point, just as you mentioned, some saturation. And also the financial markets are still uh, pretty gun shy from what they experienced right. in the financial crisis. So they are less likely to be willing to loan out for things like office buildings, industrial buildings. So I think the softness there is not so much on the demand for these things, but on the ability of the financing of these kind of uh, structures. And so, um, what about one of the one of the phenomena that we saw in you know after two thousand eight, and it and it and it uh, endured for quite a long time was. Uh, financial institutions and banks being kind of reluctant to lend money to small businesses, right? You know, they were sitting yeah. on large cap and large uh, um, cash deposits and everything, but we're kind of reluctant to lend. Have we seen any improvement in, in lending to small business? What uh, we have, uh, you know, definitely as we were in the depths of the recession, uh, banks and so on had to keep all that liquidity to meet regulation. Right. Uh, and they couldn't have it really available to lend out. And as that is starting to lessen, we're starting to see banks get through their stress tests and they seem to be OK. Uh, we're seeing that lending starting to increase a little bit. But once again, you can get different pockets of the economy where the lending is starting to tighten up. Multifamily housing, for example, is tightening up a little bit. Because there's been a lot of increase in multifamily units out there. Right. And, that, and as I mentioned with commercial real estate. So it has loosened up a little bit, but they still are a little shy to really let those lending gates open. 
Right. So, uh, uh, so in your estimation, if I was, a, if you know, if you're a salesperson and you're staring into 2018 and say you're, you know, selling software or you're selling capital goods um, or you're selling, you know, professional services, do you think you're looking at perhaps a better year than 2017? Um, probably not. Uh, but having said that, not a bad year. Right. Uh, I, I just think you're going to see some plateauing, a little slowing of growth, so that uh, 2018 will not be as good as you know 16 or 17 uh, was. But even in 17, we started to see a little bit of the plateauing and slowing. So I think that's just going to simply continue on. The one thing I will say, though, is as you know, people feeling better about their job situation, mm -hmm. uh, their financial house is better in order. We're starting to see households doing a bit more uh, consumer durable buying, okay. you know, okay. more large ticket type items. And so we've seen car sales doing a much better than they had previously and, and house furnishings and things like that. Yeah, no, I noticed that. I noticed that in the last quarter of this year, the the auto auto sales seem to have picked up uh, significantly. They were pretty soft coming up, and that's obviously an an indicator of some level of consumer confidence, right? Yes, and, and besides, uh, we were all driving around with our clunkers for a long time because <laughs> we didn't want to spend the money for a new car. So you've got the the ability to do so and the need to do so. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to people? Because um, in the wake of, uh, as we said, like 2008 and that, I mean, and, and that's now, you know, nine years ago or whatever. Um, a lot of people are still waiting for that huge, you know, for that big boom period again. And, and you know, we've had steady growth and we've had, you know, things uptick and then they plateau a little and they go down. Um, what, what would you say to people who are still sort of going like, is this the year that the boom's going to happen again? Well, you know, uh, hope, uh, you know, springs internal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, with the last time we saw overall economic activity by the gross domestic product on a year basis uh, be 3% or higher was 2005. Right. So we've, we've, we've seen back-to-back -back quarterlies of 3% these last two quarters now in 2017. But really, you know, with the, with the type of slower population growth and so forth, you know, we have such a mature, more economy out there. Uh, uh, world economies are not expected to grow that much. Um, I think you're just going to have to wait a long, long time before you see anything of a huge type of growth. But steady growth mm -hmm. is not, is, you know, that's good. Yeah, and that's what I'm going to say. So maybe people need to go back and look at, you know, steady growth being, you know, being better, more sustainable than these, you know, huge runs that, uh, you know, the thing about runs is they always come to an end, right? And they never, and they rarely end well. Yes, yes. And uh, only, you know, because a lot of these runs aren't based on fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, just like we had the housing boom right. occur, you know, those prices had no good reason for going as high as they did. And, we found out why. And um, one other thing over the last number of years, there's been a, a there's been a lot of activity in in venture capital and all of that, particularly in the tech space, and lots of money pumped in there. Do you see that there's any kind of um, balancing going to come or or adjustment going to come there? Because there seems to be a lot of you know a lot a lot of companies highly leveraged. Well, y yes, but, you know, I, I would say, you know, we don't have it. it. It doesn't even compare to what we saw in the, the tech crisis, mm -hmm. you know, that, that happened in uh, 2000, 2001. Uh, so we're, we're getting companies that have, I think, stronger fundamentals. Uh, we are getting, um, you know, it's been a lot of private, by the way, private equity money because the regular financial markets have been sort of tight in their ability to do this sort of financing. Uh, so um, I think it's still it's, it's OK, really, I think, in my mind. And just on that note about fund business fundamentals, do you think, uh, you know, solid business fundamentals have kind of come back into vogue a little bit, uh, you know, over the last while, you know, seeing as we had two major, uh, you know, adjustments with, you know, we had the tech crisis, we had the housing crisis, you know, where a lot of it was caused by people kind of throwing fundamentals out the window. And I mean, do you think f business fundamentals and well-run businesses have, are, are back in vogue? Well, you know, that's, they've always been in vogue. Mm -hmm. uh, and what hasn't been in vogue just recently is greed. Mm -hmm. uh, but believe me, uh, uh, memories are short. Uh, the greed motive will come back. Uh, and, 
As we start to go further, I think we'll see that we maybe overdid the regulations, so we'll bring those a little down. Businesses will be happy about that. And unfortunately, I think, you know, we'll, we should expect probably sometime in the future bad behavior to return. <laughs> um, so overall, uh, you, what your feelings for, for 2018? Is there anything else kind of um, that you are any other economic indicators that you're particularly looking at? Well, you know, we're definitely looking at two, two of the sort of missing in action pieces of data uh, when you start to reach full employment is that wage growth and also inflation. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to see the wage growth starting to happen. And I'm really going to be looking at inflation aspects uh, to see if we're getting any inflation creeping up. Uh, because if we do, then we will definitely see the Federal Reserve turning around and probably raising rates faster mm -hmm. than what they plan to do right. if we start to see that inflation creep in. And that will definitely put some damper uh, on economic growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so that's interesting because we haven't really seen a lot of inflation repressure just yet, right? No, we really have not. Now, now there are pockets, of course, different uh, you know commodities and so on that may have done so. But inflation is overall prices going up, not just a relative prices, because you might have prices of maybe milk going up, but the prices of shirts are going down. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, in from what you can see, if you're a salesperson heading into 2018, it's going to be another decent year. It may not. It may not be the most spectacular year you've ever had, but it's likely to be another steady year for you? I, I think so. You know, the, the aspect is uh, it's going to be slower growth. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, businesses have to be have a more eye on their competition as to, well, you know, if the growth is slowing, one way to get growth is to get better market share from your competitors. So I really think that's going to be an aspect where businesses should have to be a little bit more aware that, you know, the pie is not growing as fast so that all everybody can join in on the game. Uh, it'll be a little bit tougher competitively, I think, in 2018. But even said that, growth, I think, is going to be decent. Excellent. Well, listen, thanks, Tom. This has been fascinating. In the last couple of moments, could you tell the, the viewers and listeners a little bit more about you, how they can learn more about you and, and uh, the program you run at uh, Portland State University? Oh, sure, John. So uh, I'm director of what's called the Northwest Economic Research Center, and it's located here at Portland State University in Portland, Oregon. And uh, our center really concentrates on sort of the Portland metro area and a bit further to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we look at private and public policy type decision making and provide economic analysis to these type of uh, decisions that have to be made. Uh, one of our bigger projects is that we're doing a economic uh, outlook uh, for the Portland uh, Metropolitan Statistical Area, five counties around the Portland city area and two in the state of Washington across the river. Um, and those and it's sort of just as we have a discussion now, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at the same thing really for the Portland metro area in terms of its economic growth. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Tom. This has been a fascinating uh, conversation. Hopefully this will help some of the salespeople who watch this uh, get, you know, maybe get their confidence up for next year. Okay. Well, pleasure, John.